I'm Clint Culberson with LordsOfConsciousness.com, and I'm here today with uh, film director Jonathan Berman. Jonathan, how are you today, buddy? I'm great, thanks. Yeah. Thanks today's so a, for having me. Today's a special day. It is a special day. I've been working for a few years on a project about the Integratron Dome, which is up the road about 10 or 15 miles. And Joshua Tree, California. Thank you. We're here in Joshua Tree, California, <laughs> Contact in the Desert. So I've been working on a film about George Van Tassel, yeah. who was plugging away on this dome that he claimed uh, was inspired and uh, sourced from aliens. Wow. From uh, Venus. What, this was, uh, what, didn't you say it was back in the 50s or? Yeah, there's, um, George uh, Van Tassel was one of the first contactees. It was August, a hot evening. Probably something like this. It's been pretty hot here. Um, and uh, they came down and spoke to him in perfect English. And, uh, well, you, you see it in the film. Uh, and uh, they said they were friendly. And as a gift, they gave him this machine that would be like a time, it would be the basics of time uh, travel and at the same time would rejuvenate you because of that same technology. Wow. Yeah. And it's a wild story. Is, are there, is there evidence of this machine? you know today the actual machine exists and uh, uh is the stewards of the machine are three sisters and uh this mantron and they take people on tours of it they run it as like a commercial concern a community concern a nice a nice mix of those two things and um it never turned on it was going to spin around and draw in uh millions of volts actually Unbelievable. It's a wild story. I was attracted to it because I saw this picture in this book by Eric Davis and Mike, uh -huh. Michael Rahner uh, called Visionary States by California and uh, Spiritual Sites. And uh, I saw this picture of this crazy 50s dome with this sign that said Basics of Time Travel. I'm like, I have to see that. Wow. I've become more and more obsessed. And that obsession is part of the film. It leads me to some dark and, and ultimately interesting places. That, do you do you address the possibilities of time travel? We address it, but more from a point of view of an everyman than from a scientific point of view. Um, I think I think that would be good. It's you know the films. You know how it is when you if you do media, yeah. your film could be like twenty hours you know, <laughs> if you're not careful. Yeah. But that yeah. but that is um, uh, an interesting question. I know it's been addressed recently on some documentaries. Right. So for this for this film, did you have plenty of information, and it was it an issue of you know funneling it down and getting it to the exact you know to a smaller amount, or was it hard to actually get information about this? Oh, that's a great question. It was kind of a little bit of both. You know, yeah. it was like I have you know 50, 60 hours of film. There's a lot of stories. On the other hand, there's not a ton of archival material. I found some sort of classified um, files from FBI through Nick Redfern and some other photos and footage but um, there wasn't a lot of material on him was his family they, they were they were easy to work with they were you know they were willing to help you there's one daughter left in Palm Springs and she prefers to be left alone but there's something to be said for his his story played out on on a he was a celebrity he was on like hundreds of TV shows George yeah. you know and uh, and, um, you know, in kind of on one level was, you remember Tom Sawyer, how he had everybody paint the fence? Mm -hmm. He had a, a touch of that to, a, to his credit because part of being a visionary could also be being a community organizer. So I like that aspect mm -hmm. of the story as well. So what kind of legacy did he leave in his community beyond this machine that was, you know, coming from I, our, you know, yeah. cosmic brothers here? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, my assertion in the film is that the whole Joshua Tree alternative community, that he's like the spiritual father. And a lot of people channel him in the film. One person channels him in the film. Susie Mesroli also channels uh, George Ventasso. It's amazing. Um, so, you know, we're used, we were talking about my last film, Commune, how that was kind of like, I use that as a way of talking about um, the 60s in Northern California. This is more about the 50s in Southern California and yeah. where science met. Um, spirituality you know you had offshoots like Scientology with their thing and the Rosicrucians and then you had George out here it, was he one of the first that kind of came out here to Joshua Tree oh yeah oh wow. absolutely I mean it's it's still kind of you know remote yeah 
changing, but <laughs> imagine what it was like back then. Yeah, we, there was. Imagine. I mean, they only incorporated the town called Landers um, during that that period. Yeah. So yeah, it must have been the same. They slept on the ground with his family, his supportive wife, his kids. So we're here doing this interview on Joshua yeah. Tree, and you probably spent a decent amount of time out here, you know, doing the film. I embedded myself in the community for three or four <laughs> months. <laughs> they tried to shake me, but I'm back. <laughs> so a guy like George who has this gift or this calling, I mean, from on high in a sense, um, you know, why? how did this land in a sense make so much sense for someone like him to set up this community out here? Beyond the fact that it's remote, um, is there something about the actual nature that you find to be cosmic in and of itself? Because a lot of people sure do, it seems like. Yeah, I think that's a good question. I can answer best by, by um, using some of the answers from the film. Um, it was a place where he could think away from the city scramble of signals, which is only intensified. Mm -hmm. And so... They were aliens, allegedly, according to one uh, participant in the film, said they they were tuning him in like a radio. Mm -hmm. But that can get scrambled in the city. Um, so there's that aspect to it. There's also the night sky. Mm -hmm. And there's another aspect, you know, all good stories have multiplicities of views. And somebody else is like, no, the reason he came out here was he was on a top secret mission for Howard Hughes. George had worked for Howard Hughes. Did wow. I mention that fact? No. Yeah, it gets deep. I mean, you have to see the film, <laughs> People of Earth, <laughs> when it comes to your town. <laughs> yes. Tonight it's in your town because we're doing a community screening to kind of get some feedback from uh, um, this community, contact yeah. and some of the people in the neighborhood. A lot of the people in the film are coming tonight, so I'm excited. So cool, so cool. So when, when will it be released on a wider scale? That's a good question. I think um, over the next six months we got to... Um, Bring in an editor, so we're looking for an angel or two, hopefully here. Um, lawyers, one editor, sound works. I would say release maybe um, this time next year. So cool. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thanks Thank for you. sharing the Thanks, stories man. that aren't told always, and even the stories that mainstream media, um, I don't know, what might find so too uh, on, the, on the fringe, you know. And so to bring that to light, you know, you told me that you use channelers, you know, intuitive channelers to be a part of this, to bring... Mm -hmm. To, to have that as a you know uh, part of the uh, part of the story and um, I think it's really fascinating considering you know where the story started from his own his own channeling I suppose yeah this is, this is anything but an objective documentary I don't believe I don't believe in objective it's very personal you know because to get to the truth or a truth you got to look at it I think in many different ways um, if you're interested or your listeners viewers are interested in participating in this we have peopleofearthfilm.com and on there we're going to have all the like where we're screening in different towns and also um, our kickstarter to finish it and Perfect. we're going to also be doing i'll tell you this but don't tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> there's a camera on you <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be doing some special events around uh, kickstarter that are going to be really fun we just i'm working with a great producer in LA and we're we're going to be doing some really special late night super secret events so. that's so cool man, yeah. man it's so neat to meet you because I uh, your film commune was actually was really impactful for myself Thanks. and for my for my for my wife and yeah. even some people in my own community oh, who wow. are looking to you know who, who who think about that often there's like this off the grid movement going on you know and if we do it together you know it'll, yeah. it'll be easier and that's something that a lot of people are thinking about and if you are thinking about it, I couldn't more highly recommend watching The Commune first to really understand this group of people that in California who who tried it and yes. you know had success, had failures, had everything. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they were they're an amazing group and they're still around and it's like a school they passed through and the way they grappled with the 60s from my perspective is how George was grappling with the 50s. Mm. You know, the Black Bear Ranch came out of the 50s. They were that explosion out of the 50s. The, this scene of the sci-fi and, and the space contact came out of the 40s, right? With yeah. the, the Hiroshima and all that. And uh, a lot of most people, in, I think divergent people in this community here agree that um, it was after those bombings that there was a lot more activity with yeah. unexplained sightings and all that. So. Yeah, definitely. Jonathan, thank you, man. Hey, thank I you. hope this uh, this this People is gonna. I'm really excited to watch it tonight. This is the release, so I'm super excited. So oh, right. Okay. Thanks for coming on, dude. Fabulous. Thank you.